Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nitin Choda with Ignition Time and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being a viewer, for being a subscriber. I appreciate you. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the president's health and I'm also going to give you information about air aid for airlines. Now, I know that you want to hear more about the stimulus, but aid for airlines was something that the Democrats tried to pass today, but it was blocked. I'll give you some more information about that. This means that any aid for airlines along with the stimulus package, because I want everyone to get help. That's why I'm talking about both, because it was a priority for the House to pass the aid for the airlines first and then come to the stimulus package later. So for me, both are important. So please don't blame the messenger. But the likelihood of any aid for the airlines along with stimulus package, along with the $1,200 stimulus check and the extension of unemployment benefits, if anything has to happen, it's going to have to wait until next week. On behalf of the entire Ignition Time community, we are happy to hear from the President of the United States. Here's a tweet on your screen from the President with a video message before he boarded Marine One to head to Walter Reed. Let's watch. I want to thank everybody for the tremendous support. I'm going to Walter Reed Hospital. I think I'm doing very well, but we're going to make sure that things work out. The First Lady is doing very well. So uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I will never forget it. Thank you. So again, in this video, I'm going to go over two things. One, the health of the president. And number two, I'm going to go over what happened with the airline package uh, in, in Congress today. So let's get started. On your screen, you'll see a tweet from Vice President Joe Biden. And uh, he said, this cannot be a partisan moment. It must be an American moment. We have to come together as a nation. Those are words from Vice President Joe Biden. And also, you'll see another tweet on your screen. And this tweet is from Jonathan Martin from the New York Times. And Jonathan wrote, Vice President Joe Biden is taking down his negative ads, going all positive. And this decision was made before the White House put out the word that President Trump was being taken to Walter Reed. So I'll give you that information as well, because the president is being, take, is being taken to Walter Reed uh, out of an abundance of caution. So um, the, the position from the White House about the president's health has actually continued to evolve on your screen. You'll see a tweet. Larry Kudlow initially said that, you know, it's it's not serious. It's uh, that uh, the you know it's the situation is light on the virus. You know he said it's a rather light case. I don't think it's going to have an effect. Then he said I'm told it's a rather light case right now. Then he said I think this will be over before long. And next thing we know, the president is being taken to Walter Reed. Um, before I started this video, I did do a little prayer for the president and uh, First Lady Melania Trump, and I encourage you to do the same. Uh, let's pray collectively for the health of the president. So let's do that. And uh, this is in, on your screen, you'll see a tweet from Ashley Parker. And Ashley reported that President Trump will be transported to Walter Reed by, by Marine One. And he's expected to stay there for several days and he will work there from the executive suite. And uh, the White House also said at this point in time, and you'll see this tweet on your screen from Jim Acosta, that uh, there is absolutely no transfer of power right now. So basically that is where things stand right now. As you can see on your screen, the president arrived at Walter Reed Hospital and is expected to remain in the hospital for several days out of an abundance of caution. The president is said to be struggling with a low-grade fever, cough and congestion. White House officials do have serious concerns about the president's condition tonight and his symptoms are worse than those of First Lady Melania Trump at this point according to CNN sources and according to Jim Acosta. And another thing that really surprises me is that Speaker Pelosi was not informed about any of this and her staff did not have a heads up that the president was being helicoptered to Walter Reed. They've had no contact with the White House. This is highly unusual because after Vice President Mike Pence, Speaker Pelosi is second in line to the presidency, followed by Senator Chuck Grassley, who's third in line to the presidency. So this is unusual that there is no communication between the White House and Speaker Pelosi. Also on your screen, you'll see a tweet from Alyssa Farah, who's a White House communications director. Alyssa said, the president is in good spirits, has mild symptoms and has been working throughout the day. So that's good. Uh, out of an abundance of caution and at the recommendation of his physician and medical experts, he will be working from the presidential offices at Walter Reed for the next few days. Now, again, the position from the White House has been evolving. On your screen, you'll see a tweet from Jeff Stein. And a few hours ago, 
Larry Kudlow, the White House senior economic advisor, said that the president had, I quote, a very moderate case of COVID. Now he's going to Walter Reed for a few days. So this is what's happening. By the way, another thing that I thought was very interesting was that the September jobs report came out. So the September jobs report uh, did reveal that there was a substantial increase in the long term uh, permanent job layoffs. In other words, there's significant long term damage to the economy. So on your screen, you'll see a tweet from Joe Biden, Vice President Joe Biden. And the Vice President said millions of families, millions are still wondering when it will be their turn to come back from the brink. And he talked about, uh, in, you know, he talked about the long term unemployed individuals and a steep decline in manufacturing. Let's contrast that with what Larry Kudlow said and Larry Kudlow said that he would give the economy an A minus and he talked about the boom in car sales. So you can see that there's a significant difference in in essentially, uh, you know, the information that we're getting, we're getting different pieces of information from different people. In fact, Mike Mulvaney and you see the tweet uh, that pertains to what Mike Mulvaney said on Fox earlier today. He said that whenever they wanted the stock market to go up, mean they meaning the White House, the administration, they would put Larry Kudlow on Fox. So you can start to see that the information that we're getting seems to be um, inconsistent for lack of a better phrase. I'm not going to use the phrase misleading, but definitely inconsistent. And so I'm doing my best. We're doing our best to provide you with a fair, balanced approach at this rather unusual, rather rather stressful time for our country. Now, speaking of unusual, you'll see a tweet on your screen from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She, she wrote today, uh, Republicans blocked the House from delivering urgent relief for tens of thousands of airline workers on the brink of having their livelihoods ripped away. Either the House GOP, meaning the Republican Party in the House, is not serious about meeting the challenge facing our country, or they do not care. Strong words from the House Speaker. And speaking of the airline layoffs, because tens of thousands of layoffs are happening in the airline industry, you have to understand that what Congress is trying to do is try to save the airlines and then put together a stimulus package. So they're trying to do both. I believe that everyone deserves help. So in case you're wondering, hey, why are the airlines getting help and where's my stimulus check? I get it. But the idea is to help everybody. And since the tens of thousands of layoffs have begun and essentially that cliff happened in the past 48 hours on Wednesday this week, what they're trying to do is to help the airlines and then work on a stimulus package. The original goal was to do it all together. But now House Speaker Pelosi and Steve Mnuchin are trying to do something for the airlines separately and then come back to the stimulus package. I do believe that we can expect some good news next week. I'm fairly confident about that. And so where we stand right now, and you'll see this article on your screen from Bloomberg, airline payroll aid blocked in the U.S. House as lay as layoffs pile up. So Representative Peter DeFazio, who is an Oregon Democrat who was leading the push for this airline aid, said Republicans halted his attempt to bring up the measure, which needed unanimous backing by all House members to pass on such short notice. Republicans said that they viewed this unusual maneuver skeptically. And uh, DeFazio said, and by the way, DeFazio is the chairman of the Transportation Inf and Infrastructure Committee. He said this on the House floor. He said, Republicans killed this legislation plain and simple. So you can see that there is essentially still some element of partisan bickering, uh, which is unfortunate, but uh, I'm hopeful that they can they can come together and uh, they have to, they have to uh, for the good of the country. In fact, according to Bloomberg, Republicans believe the unusual process of trying to push an airline specific bill through so quickly, that's the key, so quickly was unnecessarily partisan, said one GOP staffer and Democrats did not consult with Republicans and the bills by budget effects had not been evaluated. He called the attempt incomplete and sloppy, according to somebody who gave this information to Bloomberg. Now, earlier, earlier today, House Speaker Pelosi had issued a statement saying that an agreement on airline aid, I quote, is being reached. And after the measure was, was blocked, she essentially slammed the Republican Party, saying again and again, Democrats offer legislation to save lives and livelihood only to be met by more Republican obstruction. She had urged airlines to hold off on layoffs until, raw ma until, law until lawmakers could pass an assistance bill. And to be honest, the whole situation is extremely ironic because a bill that was actually introduced by Republican Senators Roger Wicker of Mississippi and Susan Collins of Maine on the 21st of September, not that long ago, would give passenger air airlines, um, would give them $28 billion in aid to cover payroll. So, it's almost like the two uh, the two sides want the same thing, 
but uh, they want to prevent each other from taking credit for it. That is where things stand right now. And Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell hasn't said whether he supports a standalone bill to airlines. I think at this moment in time, again, it should be about economic relief and about helping. Instead, it's about politics. It's about timing and it's about opportunity. And I think I can add a fourth component. It's about who gets to take credit. That is what is happening in DC, everybody. My name is Dr. Nitin Choda with Ignition Time. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out my video. I have the fortune, the honor, the privilege of living the American dream. I'm not red. I'm not blue. For me, it's about the red, white and blue. It's not about being a Democrat or being a Republican for me. For me, it's about being American. If you want to get information from us, please get your cell phone out, send a text message with the word ignition or time to 70,000, that's 70000. You'll get added to SMS alerts list. You can also get added to our email list. You can go to ignitiontime.com forward slash alerts and get added to our email list. You can opt out of our emails or our SMS list at any point in time. We release videos at 2 p.m. East Coast time most days of the week. That's 2 p.m. East Coast time most days of the week. Please follow us on Instagram. My Instagram handle is ignition underscore time. You can also follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is ignition underscore time. The exact same Twitter handle as the Instagram handle. You'll get breaking news and alerts from us on Twitter. You can also bookmark youtube.com forward slash ignition time. Bookmark youtube.com forward slash ignition time. This way you can visit our homepage. You can watch the videos at any point in time that you want. I really appreciate you watching. We release videos at 2 p.m. East Coast time most days of the week. If you want to support our channel, if you want to support my efforts, all the hard work that goes into the creation of these videos, please consider subscribing. Please enable notifications. Please also like the video if you learn something new. Also, this was just reported by CNN's Jim Acosta. You'll see the tweet on your screen. A Trump advisor said there is a reason to be concerned about the president's health. This is serious, the source said, according to Jim Acosta at CNN, you'll see the tweet on your screen. The source went on to describe the president as being very tired, very fatigued and having some trouble breathing. This is latest news that came in just as we were completing this video. We pray for the health of the president and this is latest news from CNN. Finally, once again, let's pray for the president's health. Let's pray for the first lady's health. Let's, you know, let's hope that we come together. This is a time where we get to, where we get to, where we should come together, where we get to show that, you know, we put country before, you know, before partisanship or before party. So let's come together. Let's be calm. Let's be rational. You have the opportunity to make an impact to somebody else in your life. You have the opportunity to hopefully pay it forward. Let's try and come together at this time. This is, I do believe this is an American moment. Let's try and come together and uh, let's be calm and rational through this moment of crisis. In yet another update that just came in from CNN's Jim Acosta, a White House official said that the president was fatigued but not deteriorating, which is encouraging. The official went on to say that the public should not be alarmed and that the president is taking the situation very seriously. The White House is making plans to keep the public updated on the president's condition. Please note that some parts of this video were pre-recorded and this information is being used to update the video in real time. Once again, my name is Dr. Nitin Choda. Thank you so much for watching. Please click like, please subscribe, please enable notifications. That's your vote of confidence in us, all the effort that me and my team put in. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.